About four years ago, they tried to start a congregation up around here. It didn't work out, I guess. I figure it's a holy place, so we might not like it here. Come on. See, according to the legend, if one man does something bad to another man, it's got to be something real bad, something like killing. And that other man can have Pumpkinhead conjured up to take revenge. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the creature known as Pumpkinhead, featured in the 1989 horror film of the same name, which is directed by the master of special effects Stan Winston, starring Kerry Ramson and Lance Henriksen. Featured as the central antagonist of the film series, Pumpkinhead was essentially a demon of vengeance that could be summoned by those that desperately sought revenge. The creature embodied the conjurer's hate and desire for vengeance, which turned it into a ruthless and unforgiving being. Not only did the creature stalk its prey, but it also appeared to enjoy putting its victims through pain and misery, as was seen through its tactics of letting them escape, just to draw out its game of cat and mouse. Pumpkinhead had a large stumpy head, long arms, and oversized bulbs that sprouted from its shoulders, similar to the design of Xenomorphs featured in the Alien franchise. This isn't that surprising considering Stan Winston won his first Academy Award for Best Visual Effects for his creature work on James Cameron's celebrated Aliens film. I've also extensively covered the Alien franchise on this channel and will leave links to my playlist on the Expanded Universe below. Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. Y'all stop, there ain't no Pumpkinhead. What about old Mr. Foley? He moved away. Uh-uh. Pumpkinhead. Teared off his head and drank all the blood. Pumpkinhead also had white eyes that appeared to have reptilian pupils in the first film, along with a long tail and long skinny fingers that featured sharp claws used for killing its prey. The beast also featured superhuman strength, durability, and speed, as well as an incredible regenerative ability that enabled it to rapidly heal from injuries. The creature also had large digitigrade feet, which gave it a commanding presence over its prey. In the film, Pumpkinhead was summoned by Ed Harley, who as a boy secretly witnessed a man being butchered by the monster in the 1950s. Going on to have a child of his own, Ed's boy was accidentally killed by a group of youths, which led the grieving father to bring the monster back to life, with the help of a witch named Haggis to exact vengeance on his behalf. Now, not much is really known about its history prior to the events of the first film, other than the fact that the witch was the one who buried the monster in a pumpkin patch. At times, the witch would caution people about the dangers of summoning Pumpkinhead, yet she also seemed indifferent to their plight, which made her motives and true relationship to the beast hard to pin down. However, what is clear by the end of the film is that Pumpkinhead was a curse not only to the people it hunted, but also to those that conjured it. After digging up the remains of the creature and summoning the beast through a dark ritual that utilized the blood of both Harley and his child, the monster began its campaign of death, brutally killing the kids that were involved, as well as those that were bystanders of the incident. Anyone who interfered with the creature's hunt would also be marked for death, which is why many people chose not to help those that were being hunted. Tom Harley, open up Tom, it's me, Clayton Heller! Tom! Please open the door! God, please, God, so nothing to do with us. What kind of a Christian are you, for God's sakes? You gotta help me, Harley! Tom! Get away from my door. Get away from me and my family! Tom, please! As a revenge demon and a sadist, Pumpkinhead's priority was to make its victims have painful deaths. Once it had begun its hunt, the creature could not be distracted or stopped, and though it didn't kill random people, it obviously had no qualms with killing those that got in its way. Now, what Harley did not know was that the process which summoned the vengeful demon also created a psychic link between him and the creature. This enabled him to feel the pain that the monster felt, along with the ability to see the violent attacks through its point of view. Care. 
This inevitably led Harley to have a change of heart, and we see him attempting to take his own life to bring the creature down with him. And though he failed to completely stop the beast, one of the kids was able to follow through with his plan, killing the pumpkin head monster, which immediately burst into flames. As a demon, the monster of course could never truly die, and we see its curse being passed on to Harley, whose face and body began to change into the shape of the creature. We also saw the witch burying it, readying the monster for its rebirth at the hands of another poor soul who didn't realise what they were getting themselves into. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at Pumpkinhead. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.